Hey guys, this is Hank Saber giving you a very, very toasted Inferno deck profile. Um, so this deck has been giving me a lot of headaches lately. Um, I've been I've been testing for a good two and a half, three weeks now, basically since the sec of Secrets of Eternity released here in the TCG. I pr practically picked up the whole deck at once, and I've been testing here and there. I took I took it to one locals. I tested a very very different build, and I got blown away. Um, as far as record. Uh, as far as record, I did terrible. I went one and four, which obviously you probably want to turn off. I've tested the deck a lot since then, and the, this pro, this deck has been far superior to the, the previous build since then. Now there are only so many locals to go to. I have not made it to locals with this deck yet, uh, nor take it to any other events since. However, on Dolby Network, other bases, friends. Matches between friends, um, I did okay. And, you know, even the old build, I did okay. Uh, in individual duels, I think I won at least one duel in every match. I just could not win that final duel in any of the matches. So, it's unfortunate, but it happens. And also, my, my locals is very tough. So, uh, yeah, that's really um, basically what I have to tell you about this deck so far. Obviously, there are not so many decks out there. And I'll basically go into reasoning why I play the cards that I do. No pun intended. Uh, so, here we go guys, to start off the Infernoid list, we run um, one, two copies of Infernoid Ononsu. And so, Ononsu, you have to say it like it's supposed to be said, Ononsu is, has the effect of that when he's special summoned. Well, first of all, I'll, I'll get into the required, uh, the, the requirements to special summon these guys. So each, each Infernoid monster has their own way to be summoned. And basically, you have to banish from your hand or graveyard. It's not and or yet. You, you banish a certain amount from your hand or the graveyard. It cannot be a combination of both. Um, the amount set on the card. So, Nonsu requires three banishes from your from your hand or your graveyard. Um, this is the only card that requires three. When he's summoned, you can... When he's special summoned, well, you can basically destroy all other monsters on the field. Also, another thing about Infernoids is that, which kind of everyone knows, they're not normal summonable. So, you have to special summon these guys out. Um, Vanities was a, was a thing at Locals, which I dropped a few games, but um, just the fact that you can reborn this guy, special summon the Grave or the Hand, uh, destroy all the cards, or not cards, monsters on the field, and uh, also, during either player's turn, when a spell or trap is activated, you can basically tribute a monster, it doesn't have to be itself, you can tribute a monster and negate and banish it. So, that's just really good, I really like this card. You don't get it off every duel, you get it off most duels, I just really like when you get it off. The thing is, you have to learn with this deck is how to play the deck, and uh, you don't want to go for the big guys right away, and so Anonso is more of a late game grind kind of card. Um, a card that you make a lot is uh, Atondel, and for no one, Atondel. Now, what Atondel does is basically he requires two banishes, and he, when he attacks a monster, he can attack again. And so the fact that you're pretty much getting 2,800 damage, if they have one card on the field, one monster on the field, you can get 28 damage off of them. That's really good. And you have a lance for it. So it's pretty much going to go through. Uh, and it's just a great general card. And so three at Dandelas is so huge. The the duels I won or the matches I came close to winning, I almost won slash won because of at Dandel. And so at Dandel is really good. And then we run three copies of Sight Sesmas, Inferno and Sight Sesmas, level 7. And I might cut this guy down, down to 2, I just think you don't see, uh, need to make him as much as Atondel. Um, you also have Blaster as a level 7 to make your, your uh, rank 7s. However, he's a also a really good card when he attacks a monster. And um, at the end of the battle phase, you can banish a card in their field. Uh, a funny thing actually happened uh, to me at Logos where I forgot that you had to destroy a monster. I thought it was inflict damage. I got my my um, 
my my effects mixed up, and I said, "Oh, since I inflict damage to you, banish the face down." It was a fire lake, and of course, that had to hurt, uh, turn into a big debacle. So that was my fault. Uh, I uh, misread the card, and so I really wasn't trying to cheat. I just misread the card, and so uh, I run three sites this month. So it was pretty good card. Again, you don't want to be making these cards the first turn that you see them because you want to keep your resources as long as possible. If you see a, a chance to OTK, do it. But if you don't OTK them and they come back, you have a good chance of losing that duel. Um, for the level 5, I run one copy of the level 5. I see a lot of people running at 3. It's okay. The effect is not the best. In fact, it's probably the worst of all the Inferno monsters. But the fact that it's a level 5 is kind of good because... Yeah, it, it doesn't have the best effect out of all three of the monsters that requires two banishes. However, it's also a lower level. And so, basically, the higher levels have the best effects, and the lower levels have the eh, worst effects, I guess. And it's just pretty good, though. But, I mean, like, Piotti, uh, I call him P, P for Brains. He's, uh, he's a level five. He can, you know, he he's okay at certain times. Once in a while, you know, your opponent, if they're, trying, if they're having trouble drawing a good monster, and they, they're just like... Uh, setting cards or whatever, you, you can do a pretty good damage with Piotti. Just the fact he's not really that great, he's okay in grind game, I guess. Uh, I wish it was a little higher attack, but he's alright. He's alright. Then for the low level ones, we run three copies of Infernoid Petrulia, and Infernoid Petrulia is your spell trap popper, and which is which is is okay. And so Infernoid Petrulia is basically the card that you make your most your your, your good plays off of, and so that's pretty good. And so Infernoid Petrulia is used a lot. And also, uh, he also has some good combos with uh, Raiden. You can make some rank fours, and you can make some nice synchro plays. So, three Petrolia is great. Be being able to, um, if you have a lot of cards in your grave after a nice reasoning or whatever the situation is, um, it's just so great that you banish just one uh, from your hand or grave, special summon up Petrolia, and then pop one of their back row, and hopefully it's an enemies or something. You hit something good, or maybe it's the only spell trap they have, and then OTK them. And so. Um, it's also really important to know that once you bring out your first big guy, they have the effect tribute to banish from your opponent's graveyard. And so that's pretty good. The lower levels can do it during your opponent's turn, and your big guys can do it during either player's turn to tribute a card, and then banish one from their graveyard. So, I think you're just starting to get the gist of it. So, you're basically destroying all their stuff, banishing from their graveyard, uh, manipulating all the levels on your fields, and yeah, so, three copies of Petrulia, then... Um, three copies of Infernoid Harmadik. Harmadik. And Harmadik has the effect, basically, like he's a bear for free. The only bad thing is that he, you can't attack. And so, Harmadik, or whatever you say it, Harmadik, I think it's Harmadik. Um, Harmadik is really good. You can make your Dante, you can do whatever, just a good card, I mean, he's probably the, I think he's the highest priced out of all of them, I, I don't know, I, just, I got him when he was a little, 10 or 11 dollars, it just really wasn't that much money, and then he went up for whatever reason, I guess he was just the picked card, I thought, honestly, I thought Ononso was going to go up, but they picked the, the level 3 ultra rare, so, um, three copies of a Harmadic, um, or Harmadike, or whatever it is, um, no matter what, you're running three of it, like, you're, you're paying the money to get three, like, don't even come up to me, you're not running three. This is too good. I run two copies of Infernoid Antra. Now, Antra is a card I'll probably put up to three. I've been waiting a few days in the mail for the third. Um, I don't know how I feel about the third, actually. Like, I'll, I'll have to play test. I like two at the moment. I might play the third and cut a Sight Sensmos, just like personal preference. But it's pretty good. Obviously, you can make Goyo Guardian with Antra and uh, with um, Raiden. So, generally pretty good. Um, I, I like it. So, two copies of Entra. So, that's it for the Infernoid. So, you run a pretty good um, lineup of Infernoid monsters. And there's so many names. There are, there are only so many names out right now. You have to wait for more names to come out. But I think this is a good, very good primary list. So, yeah, you run a, a fair amount of uh, Infernoid monsters. So, that's your Infernoid lineup uh, for the uh, non Infernoid monsters. We run. Two copies of Raiden. Now Raiden's really good. I mean, you're basically um, milling at least two, at most four. And the one downside to 
right it is. The fact that you can only do it once per turn. So if you do this once, and then you maybe you get a monster gate, or you you monster gate uh, right in and get another raid and such or something. They're not raid. You can't activate its effect again, which is what Card Trooper has over raid. So I like uh, right in at two. I think it's a pretty good card. I think three is a little too much in my opinion, but uh, just personal preference. So yeah, two copies of Raiden. I run one copy of Lila. I see a lot of lists not running the Lila. I like Lila because Lila is just another card that you can get around Vanities. It just pops a card and that's so like that's so it's an underrated a thing, like to get around Vanities. There's so many duels where you're locked out because of Vanities and your if your opponent's good, they know how to sit on it uh, uh, at least until they like pull off until they gradually beat you, or until they have an OTK in place. Uh, happens a lot in Burning Abyss. And, um, which should be an easier matchup for you. I, I actually dropped two matches um, to it. I don't know how. I just, I got, I, mean, I guess I misplayed. It was my first time really playing the deck, to be honest with you. However, um, just getting around Vanities is, is really good, so I, I opt to play the one Lila. I think it's a good number. I also run one copy of Card Trooper. Card Trooper is a, a card I see I'm running a lot. People run it at three, uh, two rather, a two. Um, so it's all right. I mean, you you mill three right off the bat. Also, it's a plus when he's just when he's uh, destroyed and sent to the graveyard. So that's pretty good. Uh, but just you can make Dante with it. You can you know you you mill the three and it's not once per turn. I mean, if you were running the second, you could obviously activate it again. So one running one car trooper will not. Um, really hurt you, but I mean, Card Trooper in general is just a good card. So, so then we run one copy of Blaster, and so Blaster is pretty good by itself, just because of the fact that not only does it finish your OTK place, but also you can discard this and any Infernoid monster, a Fire type, and pop one of their cards. So, Blaster is just a really good card. Again, another card that is kind of a loop to vanities, so uh, Blaster is just a great card, so uh, one copy of Blaster, and that's it for your, your monster lineup, so quite a bit of monsters uh, outside your Inferno Woods. Um, really, just, uh, you want to keep your reasonings alive, so um, in total, you're running a lot of monsters, you want to make your reasonings good, so you don't, you don't run a lot of other monsters. Uh, two copies of the Field Spell White Expansion. I see a lot of people not playing this card. This is one of the cards I like of uh, the archetype cards. I know a lot of people don't run a lot of the archetype cards, such as the Traps. However, Void Expansion is an exception to that. The reason why I like Void Expansion, even though it's a little bit of a slow card, because it's during your standby phase when you get the token. Um, I, I like it because not only do you get the token once per turn, but also you get to... Um, banish the, the Inferno monsters that you have on the field. So it gives you another, uh, or, or any combination of from your hand or from your graveyard, whatever. Um, and it says any combination of both. So uh, that's just really good. And so I like having that uh, accessibility to any uh, Inferno monster without, with basically one less banish because you can you can banish your Inferno monsters on the field, including your tokens. And so I like the two copies of Void Expansion. Uh, I'll leave that there for that for now. Um, I like the two copies of the basically the pandemic, but it's even better than pandemic. It's basically like a fellow grand in the spell card. I mean, for Void Seer is a great card. It helped me out so many times at locals. I wouldn't run, like you can run it at three. I don't love it at three. I think it'd be a little bit better at two. Um, I, I I like the fact that you can protect your N40 monsters pretty much anything, and it's also a quick play spell. Yada yada yada. It's pretty good. So Void Seer is an amazing card. And then I run the three obligatory card copies of Reasoning. And what Reasoning does is basically, since your Infernoid monsters aren't normal summonable, your, uh, you have a very few amount of normal summonable monsters, which include your two Raidens, your one Lila, your one Card Trooper, and your one Blaster. And basically, they declare a level. If they, if the, you, you basically mill until you excavate, technically. Uh, you basically mill until you reach a normal summonable monster. Now, if that monster equals that level of the declared number, then it goes to the graveyard. If not, you special summon it. So, you're running different levels and whatnot, it's pretty good. So most likely they'll declare four, which is a good choice, but if you magically hit the car trooper or the blast, you can summon it. So, I like um, the, the reasonings. So, obviously everyone will run it. And then we run the uh, 
the one monster gate as kind of like the fourth reasoning and just a, another way to to mill a lot of monsters and i know this is embarrassing uh i opened up all four of these in one game against heroes and believe it or not i lost the duel because i i got all my resources um, down the drain in my graveyard and I waited a turn because I kind of had to it was I went first um, and so uh, to OTK him and he basically OTK me with all like he had the perfect hand it was kind of embarrassing because the guy didn't know what he was doing he was just like activating cards and he activated all the chain spells he had like the magic hand and just defeated me and it was like that was probably like the saltiest I ever gotten in uh, locals match so 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 salty so I open the nuts and you lose, so that's pretty bad. I run two copies of MST. Obviously, the third is not bad. I just I like two right now. Just like you have so many other ways to get around vanities. Running the third is not bad. I just don't have the room for the third, so two copies of MST is okay, I suppose. Um, then we run onto the one ofs in the uh, spell lineup, which is basically the rest of the main deck. We run one copies of Charge of the Light Brigade. Now, Charge of the Light Brigade is good. You can send the top three cards of your deck to Graver, then at a level four lower lights or a monster from your deck to your hand. Yada yada yada. It's alright. I mean, I was running Mortal Lights for an engine at Locals. That was pretty much the deck I was running. I mean, it, it just didn't work out. I was running Wolves. I was I uh, was running uh, 3 Lumina, which was alright at times. It just wasn't so amazing. Uh, it gave me a little bit of a consistent uh, milling, but it just it clogged a lot. The two solar recharges I was playing charge uh, really clogged a lot, and it just really wasn't worth it. So this is really the only lights run card I'm running, other than the of course the Lila, the Lila, and the two Raidens. So uh, charge of the light brigade is still though a very good card just to send top three, um, and then a very similar card to uh, charge. This is a personal tech. I have not seen this card in. Any uh, any infernoid infernoid deck of any type. I run one copy of Allure of Darkness. Now now you're like Hank Saber. What are you doing? Allure of Darkness. You don't run any darks. I know that. The reason why I run Allure of Darkness in this deck, and I did not run this in the tournament, by the way. Um, you basically you draw two. So before you activate this card, you know that you want you want to keep certain cards. So you set them, and so uh, um, you set your maybe your reasonings or whatever. You activate, then you activate a lore. So you have all your inferno monsters in your hand, and you 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 want to get them to the same place, which is kind of what I learned in this deck. You want to get them into the same place. So the graveyard is kind of the best option for that. Um, so Allure of Darkness, you would draw two cards, since you don't have any darks in your hand, you're, you're not playing any darks, um, the, unless you side in a Chaos Hunter, I think it's a dark. Uh, but other than that, you're going to be sending all your cards to your graveyard, which is good in this in this deck. I mean, you draw two cards, you send all your Infernoid cards to the graveyard, which is pretty good, and I just really like Allure of Darkness in this deck. Uh, if you don't want it, if you don't like it, obviously you could play maybe a third MST, but I would actually try using this. I have not tested it much, but Allure of Darkness seems like a pretty good option, so I run one Allure. Uh, if you despise me for a uh, man having imagination, so be it. I run one copy of one burial from a different dimension. Is uh, you know I don't really see the reason why it has to be a quick play, but uh, select up the three monster cards that are removed from play and return them to your owners uh, to their owners' graveyard. So uh, it's a generally good card. So I mean, I can see this card being teched in against actually. Uh, Ritual beasts, spiritual beasts, whatever you call them, uh, because they they rel rely on having their banished monsters uh, to fusion something. But um, yeah, it's just a good card in your deck just to obviously recycle your monsters and just like, banish them again. And so uh, and then I run one copy of Miracle Day, kind of a similar thing to Burial, because if you have five or more, you can target three and then like put them back into your gra graveyard. So just a very similar card. And then for the other one ofs, we run one copy of Raigeki. Uh, one dark hole because there are certain situations where you want to get rid of your own monsters to rebuild boards and whatnot, and then of course snatch jail. So um, that's your that's your your lineup. Uh, I'm playing trapless. I just don't think like traps aren't that great in this de deck. Obviously, um, uh, two good options are needle bug nest, and I was actually at the tournament. I was running. I don't know where the third one went. Uh, I think it's like uh, I don't think it's here, but. I was basically running three of this. Uh, I was running three. I, I just like wasn't that great. Like it was all right. There was one time where I got a non-so off, and it turned to be like the, the the duel. I just like 
it's a little slow at the same time. Like, I think this car would be better if you had more Inferno Monsters to run. Like, it's it's all right. I just think if you run more Inferno Monsters and less of the, maybe the Light Swords, like, it, it would be better. I don't know where this archetype is going to go, but I just feel like the archetype cards, such as Eye of the Void and the other one, which sends to the graveyard, I think they would be a little bit better when you run more Inferno Monsters. So just, like, something to keep for 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 thought, so yeah. Uh, for the extra deck, we run one copy of Goyo Guardian, obviously, like any deck that can make this card, you pretty much want to run it. Uh, one Gaia, because uh, the Infernal Monsters, to sum themselves, they count the total amount of levels of effect monsters, so this is not an effect monster. So I run one Gaia, for that reason. I run uh, one Yazi, because Burning Abyss. Uh, one Black Rose is to kill clear boards, and it's actually really good against Burning Abyss because they have their effects to special summon. They only have Graffins here, and like if you get one of one, uh, one field of Burning Abyss, like they'll probably make a secondary field. Once you get rid of that secondary field, like you can pretty much OTK them, which actually happens kind of a lot because the Inferno monsters are pretty good at stopping these uh, these said Burning Abyss monsters at getting their effects off, such as Seer. You can banish it and before it resolves, so it's just like really good. So. I really like Black Rose. It's really good. And then Scrap Archfiend for similar reasons as Gaia Knight. Uh, just not an effect monster. Uh, Dark Strike Fight, I run it for just burn damage. Uh, for the level 8s, I run Scrap Dragon. And actually, that's the only level 8 I run, sorry. I was running Stars for a little bit, but I just decided to cut it. And then it's probably like actually the one I kind of made the most, like Star Eaters. Just surprisingly, you make it a lot with Raiden and uh, the level 7 Splaster or Scythe uh, Sesma. So, uh, Star is a good card in general. Right now, is like you can't respond to it. Uh, that's it for the synchros. For the Xyz, I run one Dante. Like Dante is a good card for this deck, just to like um, to mill. But just if you don't have the card, I don't know if I will like fork over the money to buy it. If you run Burning Abyss though, like if you have Dante's already, like it wouldn't be a bad deck to pick up. Just really good deck that can utilize Dante in a good way. So just I like Dante. And then uh, I run one Ex Evil Storm Exit Knight. Uh, for the rank fours, I also run a Castell and I run one copy of Genite Pearl because it's a normal type Xyz. And for the sevens, I run one Draco Sack and one Big Eye. And for the final uh, card of the whole deck list, I run one copy of Divine Dra Dragonite Felgrand. So that's the list, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, it's really a little bit different than some other lists out there. I, I, I know that. I just think it's like the best option right now because you want to get your plays off kind of as quick as possible and then once you get your plays off you're pretty good at recycling your monsters and yada 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 you you're it's a pretty good deck for a grind game and uh, I, I just respect the archetype so much I, just, I really wanted to pick it up and the fact that you can make like look at this extra deck it's just like the best cards in all Yu-Gi-Oh right now it's just so good and so I really like this extra I would really advise picking up a deck is so good right now and uh, I know I didn't do that great but it was like primary testing and it's happened so um, uh, just have to adapt and uh, yeah that's pretty much the list guys uh, for a side deck just pick up Chaos Hunters they're really good for this deck just look up what it does really good against getting around Dark Law and stuff like that although Dark Law hasn't really been a problem with me so far yet at least I've always found a way to get around it so it just really Dark Law is Oh, like it's really hard to stop if they open with it but if they don't like you pretty much like you don't have a problem with it you can get over easily but uh, that's pretty much it like that's all I have to say right now about this deck I made a, a one list before this I didn't really like it I scrapped it so this is the only this is like the first deck profile I'm actually showing people on YouTube so I hope you guys like it this is certainly a uh, way different than the deck I did not perform well with but if you want to try so something on Dueling Network this is some, like the way to go and in the future I'll be doing a lot more uh, updated builds of Inferno Obviously, not that many Inferno deck lists out there, so I uh, hope you guys enjoy it. So, this is Hank Saber signing off for now. Leave a like and subscribe. Peace.